So I'm going down a rabbit hole. Bear with me. So if Pepsid AC helps with PMDD. I researched that, and it says that if it helps with that, then your PMDD is histamine-based, right? And I'm like, you know, a lot of stuff around periods and stuff can be trauma-related as well. So I was like, I wonder if trauma and histamines are related. So then I Googled, you know, is trauma, does trauma cause histamines or something like that? And it says PTSD can cause the release of histamines. And so I'm wondering if autoimmune diseases linked to trauma have to do with inflammation of histamine. Can anybody clarify this? My curious brain wants to know. Hi, I'm Dr. Rubin. I'm a board certified allergist immunologist. I'm going to try to go down this rabbit hole with this person to try to answer and clarify some of these questions that they're asking. First, if you Google search PMDD, which stands for premenstrual dysphoric disorder, and Pepsid, which is an antacid that works as an antihistamine, you will come up with Google searches that do not go to peer-reviewed, evidence-based journal articles. You will see a bunch of blogs trying to make a claim that PMDD improves by taking famotidine, which is known as Pepsid. We actually don't fully understand the mechanisms of PMDD but there's not really any literature to support that mast cells or histamine is driving that condition. So while you may hear people online say that Pepsid may help their PMDD symptoms, this hasn't been really studied, so if you choose to use it, it may or may not work. I really just don't know. The second point that the original video was trying to make is that trauma somehow causes histamine release. And so there is some truth to that, and I need to give you a little bit more information to give you context, which this article does a really good job of doing. Stress is a potent activator of an immune cell in your body called mast cells. So when you get stressed out, your hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis is activated and corticotropin releasing hormone binds to mast cells, causing them to release all sorts of chemicals. And it's not just histamine, but it's all of these guys as well. So yes, stressful events and chronic stress like in PTSD leads to mast cell activation that then leads to histamine release and pro-inflammatory markers. The last question from the previous video asked whether autoimmune diseases that are potentially triggered by trauma is due to histamine. What I want people to understand is that autoimmune diseases are the consequence of your own immune system having an abnormal response to your own healthy tissue. And so as an example, with rheumatoid arthritis, you are having an abnormal immune response to your own joints, leading to inflammation that makes it hard for those joints to move and can cause severe damage over time. This paper goes over several autoimmune disease states and how mast cells often congregate in tissues where autoimmune diseases are occurring, but it's not the only cell that's causing these problems. Therefore, histamine is not the only thing that's driving this issue. It's a multifactorial problem. An example of something that could potentially trigger autoimmune disease is infections. We've been seeing a lot of research poured out lately showing that there are associations with COVID-19 infection in developing autoimmune diseases. You can think of it as the infection is causing the immune system to go out of balance and there can be some permanent issues with that. So like with type 1 diabetes, if you have an autoimmune response to the beta cells of your pancreas, then you can't produce insulin and you can't metabolize glucose sugar molecules anymore. So I hope you learned something from this video, and if you want to know more information about allergies and immunology, feel free to hit the follow button to learn more.